Right, that worked. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Over the past several months, ABES has been working on research into infrastructure and Australia's food industry. A preliminary economic assessment was released in November last year. This report is available on the ABES website. We're currently working on four follow-up research projects. These include the supply chains of three major export commodities, wheat, beef and dairy, and the subject of today's presentation, Australia's air freight food exports. Air transport is a significant <coughs> supply chain option. Australia's air freight food exports were $1.6 billion in 2011-12. There has been strong growth in livestock-based exports, especially for meat and meat products. Victoria, Tasmania and Queensland are key growth areas. There is also growth potential. As Jamie Penn discussed this morning, global food demand is projected to increase strongly to 2050, providing substantial export market opportunities. However, there are challenges in the air freight supply chain. Notably, since Australia's major airports were privatised, outbound freight has levelled off. The major airports have been successful in increasing international passenger movements, but there needs to be a greater focus on international freight. The presentation is in three parts. I will first provide a brief overview of Australia's air freight food supply chain. This is followed by infrastructure issues and broad approaches for increasing the efficiency of the supply chain. This slide provides an overview of supply chain options for food exports. Everyone in this room would be familiar with the sea transport options. These include bulk shipping, and containers, unrefrigerated and refrigerated. You may not be as familiar with the air transport options. Around 80% of the volume of food exports is transported in the cargo hold of passenger aircraft. The remainder is transported in dedicated freighter aircraft and ad hoc charter aircraft. Sea transport is most important, accounting for around 95% of the value of Australia's food exports. This slide shows the value of Australia's exports for four main food commodity groups since the mid-1990s. The two main commodities exported by sea transport are other food and livestock-based food. Other food includes crops-based food apart from fruit and vegetables and beverages. Livestock-based food includes meat and meat products, live animals excluding fish, and dairy products. The two main commodities exported by air transport are fisheries products and livestock-based food, mainly meat and meat products. Notably, the value of air freight exports of livestock-based food has increased over the period. This slide provides a snapshot of the air freight supply chain in 2011-12. The data allow us to distinguish between state of origin, where food is produced, and state of departure, the point at which food is exported. As you can see in the left-hand figure, Victoria is the most important jurisdiction. A key feature of the air freight supply chain is that all food produced in Tasmania and just over half of food produced in South Australia is moved to other states, mainly Victoria, for export by air freight. Asia is the main destination market, accounting for 70% of air freight food exports. The Middle East and Europe are also significant destination markets. This slide indicates two key areas of concern. The value of air freight exports has recently declined 
across most food categories in New South Wales and Western Australia. Infrastructure issues are covered in three parts. First, the World Economic Forum Global Competitiveness Indicators. This information is useful because it provides a guide to Australia's international competitiveness, the key components of the economy, including infrastructure. This is followed by the policy setting for major airports in Australia and recent trends in Australia's international air freight and passenger movements. Australia ranks 21 out of 148 economies for the Global Competitiveness Index. Infrastructure is one of the main components of the index. Australia's rank for infrastructure is 18. A rank that is better than the Global Competitiveness Index would usually indicate this is an area of international competitive advantage. However, we need to look at the detailed components of infrastructure to understand what's going on. The slide shows five of the detailed components of infrastructure. These are the most relevant to this session. Australia ranks highly for air passenger travel, six in the world, indicating this is an area of international competitive advantage. By contrast, Australia ranks between 30 and 42 for quality of transport infrastructure. This slide shows the 17 leading destination countries for Australia's air freight food exports in 2011-12. These are export market shares. The countries in orange rank better than Australia for quality of air transport infrastructure. This highlights a key point. When food producers or exporters are considering export market opportunities, they need to think about the quality of the infrastructure in the destination market. There has been an important deregulation and privatisation process in Australia's international air transport sector. The Australian Government privatised the major airports between 1997 and 2003. Notably, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane and Perth airports are in the Tier 1 category. These airports are subject to light-handed monitoring. In its 2011 review, the Productivity Commission received contradictory views about the performance of light-handed monitoring. Airports argued the arrangements worked well. Airlines and other users raised some issues. The regulator, the ACCC, had also raised some concerns. The Commission found light-handed monitoring generally worked well, but recommended some strengthening of the arrangements. The Commission also found that opening up Avalon and Gold Coast airports had increased competitive pressures on Melbourne and Brisbane airports. Congestion in transport networks around major airports, particularly in peak periods, has been recognised as a significant issue. Recent reforms have been introduced to better integrate airport transport planning across jurisdictions. The Productivity Commission recommended the effectiveness of these reforms should be reviewed in 2015. The value of Australia's total air freight exports was $28 billion in 2011-12. Gold is the most important commodity. Gold exports were $16 billion. 100% of gold in this category is exported using air transport. Another important air freight export commodity is medicinal and pharmaceutical products. These products are highly perishable and cold chain management is critical, even more so than for food. These medical products are also only exported using air transport. The value of Australia's total air freight imports was $68 billion in 2011-12. 
This slide shows international passenger movements since the mid-1980s. Total passenger movements, that is inbound plus outbound passengers, provide an indication of throughput of major airports. As you can see, the major airports have been successful in increasing passenger movements since privatisation around the beginning of the century. This slide shows international freight movements over the same period. This is based on the volume of trade. Inbound freight, indicated by the red line, continued to increase following privatisation. However, outbound freight, indicated by the blue line, has levelled off. There has been some recent increase in outbound freight, mainly due to increases in Victoria and Queensland. Is there a role to open up Canberra Airport? Recent developments raise concerns about the efficiency of Australia's air freight supply chain, including for food. Food accounts for over 60% of the volume of air freight exports. This slide indicates two broad areas that provide significant potential to increase the efficiency of Australia's air freight supply chain. First, Victoria's air freight supply chain was examined in 2010 and 2011. The study included consultations with industry and government participants in the supply chain. The 2010 study focused on identifying impediments in the supply chain. The 2011 study focused on identifying solutions to those impediments. The six priority areas for efficiency improvements range from high level planning of freight services to addressing inconsistencies in operating hours. This type of study could usefully be undertaken in other jurisdictions. More broadly, the Australian Government has an important role in facilitating market access. That is, improving the conditions agreed by countries for the entry of specific products into their markets. This may include gaining access to new markets or improving access in established markets. Free trade agreements are important for delivering lower tariffs on Australia's food exports. Market access for food products is also affected by technical barriers to trade. These are technical regulations and product standards. And food safety and animal and plant health measures. Notably, the Australian Government's biosecurity reform process is important because it should reduce industry costs while maintaining a high level of biosecurity protection, for example, by streamlining clearance and inspection processes. This slide shows the domestic component in an air freight food supply chain. There are several stages and domestic transport networks are clearly important. The supply chain starts with the farmer. Future growth in air freight food exports will only occur if farmers and food processors have the economic incentives to invest in food production. In economic terms, an efficient supply chain needs the economic incentives of all supply chain participants to be aligned. A more efficient supply chain should increase the return to farmers and food producers all else the same. Farmers and food producers also have a role to play. They can assess options to reduce transport and handling costs. A key message to food producers from the Victorian study is to know your supply chain. This will result in better informed decision making. In conclusion, air transport expands supply chain options for farmers and food producers particularly for high value food products that are time sensitive. Key approaches to address efficiency concerns include increasing the focus on freight movements at major airports, extending the Victorian air freight supply chain study to other jurisdictions, and progressing the Australian government's biosecurity reform process and continue to improve market access more broadly. All supply chain participants can benefit from increased air freight food exports. Importantly, 
farmers and food processors need reasonable economic incentives to invest in, pr in food production. This represents the start of the air freight supply chain. Thank you. Thank you.